Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51% a show about women reshaping our world. And of course, this is the week we're marking International Women's Day. So coming up, French companies are now by law required to publish online their score in a move to reduce the gender pay cap. But just how easy is it for businesses to fulfil this demand? We also meet the Brazilian women who are literally rebuilding their lives by designing and constructing new homes for them and their families. And anger in the African film world over the lack of female representation among this year's winners of the continent's preeminent film and television festival. But we begin here in France, where the government wants companies to become more transparent on the issue of equal pay. Those who score poorly could be fined with up to 1% of their salary bill. Critics say the index has flaws and is subjective, since companies carry out the test on themselves. Our colleagues at France Deux went to see two businesses who are already trying to do their part. She's one of the rare women you'll see at a construction site. Diane Franey is in charge of security for a civil engineering company, one of only 30 women out of 400 employees. I don't know if it's harder for me or them. You do have to have a strong personality, but it's going well. Franey landed a top job and the paycheck that goes with it, but she soon realised that her case wasn't necessarily the norm. So she convinced her boss to look into the gender pay gap. I realised that it was something I hadn't worked on before and that it wasn't good. It's not OK to pay people less than others for no particular reason. To make it a fairer workplace, they had to invent a scale to measure performance. We had to come up with a set of criteria, level of education, responsibilities, knowledge of regulation. As a result, a dozen women received a pay rise, including this accountant who had been moving up the ranks without making more money. In line with the new index, she got a 25% raise. That's 700 extra euros a month. <laughs> At first, I thought it was a mistake. <laughs> it's a boost that's changed her daily life. I'm proud. After all, we're equal to men. Just because we're not out on the construction sites, it doesn't mean we don't deserve our status. Other businesses have been working on the gender pay gap for years. This insurance company promises equal pay for equal work. As a woman, it's important to me to work for a company like ours, where there are schemes in place and things are done. It's not just words on paper. If women take maternity leave, they're guaranteed a pay rise when they come back, something they might not dare to have asked for in the past. Here, management stresses they equally support the evolution of their male and female employees. Four out of ten of the highest paid staff members are women. We're not looking to create quotas. We're simply trying to find a balance. Because diversity is important on executive boards, in management positions. It's an environment that encourages positive results. Thanks to these policies, this company knows that it has nothing to worry about with the new law on equal pay. Now to Brazil, where like elsewhere in the world, as we just saw, the design and construction industries are still very much dominated by men. But a group of women in a Brazilian working class neighbourhood are learning how to design and build homes of their own. It's a project that's been recognised by Architects Without Borders. Our team on the ground went to meet them. On the outskirts of Belo Horizonte, a city to the north of Rio, in the favela of Paulo Freire, this construction site seems like any other, except the workers are all women. I'm going to show them first how to strengthen the wall, and then how to make the cover. The group Architecture in the Periphery is 100% female. Founded by these architects from the local university, they oversee projects from plan to completion. Put the cement there, we're going to dilute only half. Today, project manager Senir teaches 10 single mothers how to finish a wall. Cheyenne, who's 25 and unemployed, never imagined retrofitting her own home, which was falling apart. You've never met architects from the favela before now. It's incredible how we learn to do everything. 
If I need to, I will do it. For my room, for example, I'm not going to need any man. I'm going to do it alone. They're more independent. They know exactly what they want and depend on no one. It makes all the difference. Truth be told, it offers them a form of freedom. It also offers financial independence for these disadvantaged families. The group connects them with micro-loans financed by private donors and by the university. Since 2013, Maria Borel and her colleagues have helped more than 100 women, like Marina. After they came, I finished it all by myself. From the little they taught me, I myself laid all the rest of the tile. The loan helped you with the construction, didn't it? Yes, it sure did. I was unemployed when we started this work, though I've now found a job. It helped me a lot financially. If the primary goal was to improve housing for women in these neighborhoods, the project quickly took an activist turn. This is a way of valuing the work women do in the home, especially because they are the ones who take care of the domestic areas. In a still very macho Brazil, for these women with no university diploma, architecture allows them professional credentials and even a new career. And frustrations continue in the world of film with female artists calling for more recognition in African cinema. This after Rwandan director Joel Karakezi scooped the top prize at this year's Fespaco Film Festival. In 50 years, no woman has ever won Best Film at these awards. A long-time activist and a familiar face at the Fespaco Film Festival, Senegalese artist and filmmaker Fatou Kande Sango has been battling for years to produce her work in Africa, whilst also fighting for other women and their place in the continent's film industry. Women working in cinema, they need a portion of funding set aside for them because they have a different life rhythm. They can't be constantly available. When a woman has a child, she needs two years. And when she comes back, these funds need to be available to allow her to get back in the door, to be accompanied financially. In the 50 years since its creation, the festival's top Etalon de Yeniger award has never gone to a woman, a situation which the president of Fespaco's first ever jury is determined must evolve. It's a question of mentalities, which can't be changed just like that. Everyone has to be involved. If everyone is convinced that women can make beautiful films, films of quality, and just as well as men can, then I think it's time that a woman's film was given the Etalon de Yenenga Award. Following the outpouring of accusations of sexual harassment and assault around the world, now African cinema is having its own Me Too movements, with the hashtag Mempapeur, or Not Even Afraid, taking off during this year's festival. One actress told France 24 about the sexual assault she suffered. One day, we were supposed to go to a party. I found myself alone, in the car with him. He turned right into the forest. He began touching me, and I started screaming. Taboos may have been broken, but there's still a long road ahead for the women who have dared to break them. As in African cinema, like elsewhere, victims of sexual assault are often cast in doubt. And finally, the first Moroccan to scale the seven summits of the world's continents happens to be a woman. Bouchra Bebanou says she wants to inspire a whole new generation of young girls who dare to believe in themselves. Climbing up Antarctica's tallest peak, Mount Vincent's summit is at 4,892 metres. Bouchra Baibanou reached the top last December, making her the first Moroccan to scale all seven summits. It took her eight years to travel the world and achieve her dream. The 49-year-old has completed her journey to reach the highest peak of every continent. She hopes her experience can inspire others. I hope to be a role model, especially for young girls, so that they too dare to make something of themselves, to believe in themselves, to believe in their dreams. Baibanou says there's nothing like extreme sports to overcome one's fears and learn not to give up at the first obstacle. 
With the will to do so and a lot of perseverance, you can achieve your dreams, dreams as big as climbing Everest or reaching the seven summits of the world. Accomplishing this feat wasn't without financial burdens. The mountaineer had a budget of 185,000 euros to climb all seven mountains. By day, Bai Banu is an engineer. In her own words, she's just a normal Moroccan living her dreams. Having reached the top seven times, she says she'll continue campaigning to develop mountain tourism in her native Morocco through community work and motivational speeches around the country. And what an impressive person she is. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France 24, 51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.